Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian-American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. With us are two guests, President Berardo Paradiso and Executive Director Ilaria Costa of the Italian-American Committee on Education, also known as IACE. They tell us about IACE's mission, its activities, and the special projects, as well as the positive evolution of IACE since its foundation in 1975 to the end of 2020. Let's join them now. Welcome, Berardo Paradiso and Ilaria Costa to Italics. I think this is a wonderful time for us to discuss, uh, in general, Italian, the teaching of Italian, the learning of Italian, and why we should learn Italian, but also, you know, uh, what Iace does and what is it? And, and it's called in Italian, we call it an ente gestore. So maybe one of you can tell us what that means in English if we can, there is really no translation for it, and then describe a little bit what the ente gestore is. Thank you very much. We are nothing else than uh, uh, a nonprofit organization under the loop, I will say, of the Italian government and the Italian embassy and the Italian consulate. And we work together to promote the Italian language and culture in the tri-state area. It is New York, Connecticut and New Jersey. We receive uh, funds from the Italian government and the funds or the money it is related to the amount of students that we produce every year. So let me just give you a brief uh, history of the Iace. The founder of the Iace was Angelo Gimondo. And as a matter of fact, in 2021, we will celebrate 40 years of the beginning of the Iace. Angelo was uh, a teacher and later he became a superintendent, but uh, he had a very good vision what should be the culture and mostly the tradition uh, in the Italian-American community. So he worked very, very hard to establish a link between the Italian culture, the Italian language, and the Italian-American community. But uh, he had the vision as a teacher and uh, many, many other languages, uh, they arrived in the tri-state area in the United States to compete with, the, the, with our language. So approximately 15 years ago, when I was a president of the Italian American Chamber of Commerce, I am a businessman, I am not uh, a professor, but I am a good businessman in the sense that they know marketing and they know how to promote the language. And I also, the consul general at the time, he said, Berardo, I need somebody like you to promote the Italian language in the tri-state area because we are doing well but we only have 5,000 students and they think we can do much better than that. That was a challenge for me and at the time Ilaria was already there, so I want to say. Uh, the Iace was in, in, I think it was in a very small room in a church at the Blickery Street. I accept the challenge and they said, look, I need a plan. In 10, 15 years, my plan is to have 100,000 students in the tri-state area, uh, learning Italian language and culture. So everybody said, how you can do that? I said, well, said, you know, it is a business plan. We need partners. We signed an agreement with the Italian Cultural Institute. At the time, it was Claudio Angelini, the president. And we moved the Iace to the basement of the Italian Cultural Institute. We spent good money to renovate the offices. So we had the beautiful offices, so we had the video, and uh, we started over there. Just to let you know that we just finished the data because we have to communicate all this data to the Italian government. And I'm very, very proud of my board and all the supporters because we have 322 schools in the tri-state area. We have 2,700 46 courses and the 69,800 students in the trace. We, we talk about public schools. On top of that, we have 2,532 students 
they do extracurricular classes like for adults and for children and we have for special program 1669 so our budget when i took the yacht in my hand was less than the two hundred thousand dollar we have a budget now the three million dollar and we have this year 74,000 students. So I think progress has been done naturally. Everything has been done with a great team that they have on my board and with the help of many, many people, including all the Italian American associations and mostly with uh, the people that they have in my office. And Ilaria is uh, naturally mi mio braccio destro, you know, she is. Uh, but uh, to tell you that was easy in the beginning, no. We had to have many, many fights because, uh, as you well know, uh, Professor Anthony, when you deal with Italian Americans, uh, the most uh, important thing is to destroy whoever built something. Let's say that everyone has their own idea and they feel very strongly about it. Well, but I have to say that today that they reached uh, a mature age, uh, yeah. for sure, and I am ready to let uh, other people to do my job because it's a big job, you know. And uh, I want just to underline an aspect that in our board we have all very professional people and each one of them is giving a great contribution and all of us, we are doing this pro bono. Every single penny is distributed to create uh, new classes. And this year that we had the pandemic here, we were the most successful Italian language and culture among the other languages because right away in February with Ilaria we had the intuition that we had to do something to change the course of teaching and we connected right away classes with the specialists in Italy that they are the, an example for the world how to teach online and we produce products and books and video for these people how to teach. And uh, we did an excellent job by having more classes. That means that our student in this year went up by almost 15,000. So this is a really big number. So now we are dealing with big, big numbers. We are very, very proud, but naturally, this is a structure. It is a building right. made by many, many floors. Yeah. And Ilaria yeah. maybe can uh, explain to you what we did to reach this number. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you, Berardo. Our uh, primary mission is to promote the Italian language in public schools and private schools of the tri-state area. We give funds that come from the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Rome for the purchase of educational material for teachers of Italian and a teacher salary. Obviously, our efforts, uh, especially since March, were focused on providing online resources for teachers of Italian, um, especially AP teaching material, because as you know, the AP Italian exam was uh, in a different format this year. It was online, so we had to prepare both students and teachers to this online new format. So we focus also on the professional development uh, workshops for teachers, and we organize many, many events online in partnership with Studio Arcobaleno, which is a training organization for teachers based in Milan, and they are specialized in training teachers online, as well as Econ, which is a, a consortium of Italian universities that created and developed online material for teachers of Italian as well. And then another big part is to offer Italian classes for adults. And now, of course, we are offering it online. It was really uh, a very quick and I would say efficient transition from in-person instruction to online back in at the end of February already. So what we did was to train the teachers, again, full immersion training sessions for teachers. Uh, so we were able to offer high quality Italian classes for adults. 
So we adapt, as Darwin would say, we were the most adaptable ones, and we successfully doubled the number of our enrollments. Uh, I always quote this guy who is 85, I think, um, one of our students who wrote me, life without Italian is like a Prosecco without bubbles. <laughs> Another woman, for example, in her 80s as well, she lost her husband during COVID and uh, she said that Yace saved her life again because she could stay connected. So we were offering not only Italian language instruction, but also um, social support. Uh, th these people were isolated, were, were lonely, were, were in total solitude in New York back in the spring and in the summer when there was a total lockdown. And uh, the Italian language classes became a way of stay connected. Wow. And now, I mean, they are all tech savvy, more than me, these 80 years old students, they can really navigate on Zoom platform, Google Classroom, Google Meet. So they were very um, responsive to change and very fast. And also we are very grateful to our board member, Piera Parazzolo, who is an expert on uh, uh, online marketing strategies, because we expand our, um, the number of our students, we expand the enrollment thanks to a very aggressive campaign uh, on social media. It's really interesting how um, what you're saying now about how these Italian classes have become more than just Italian classes, right? Their social outlets, their social networks, their, or they create a social network, etc. So when when we we all go back uh, to our physical uh, plants, right? And and in this case with Furiace. It is the um, ground floor, the basement actually, of the Istituto Italiano di Cultura up on Park Avenue. Um, what are your plans, or have you discussed it all yet? Have you thought about what the future delivery of the Italian courses are gonna be? Is it gonna be uh, uh, some of them in person, some of them online. Anthony, as you well know, this COVID uh, has changed all our life. Yeah. To predict a future, it is uh, very much uh, like uh, to do guessing in uh, mathematics. But I know for sure, because uh, all my life I invested with the young people. And uh, as much I work with adults to create the programs, but uh, I always saw the future on the young people. And I am reading a lot and I am consulting with uh, some psychologists and uh, people that are experts on the field. And they all feel all over the world that the young people, they need to meet each other. They need to fight. They need to hug each other. They need to go through their uh, growing process. So I think, and uh, this is not a prediction that is based uh, in uh, too many data, that uh, the future for teaching, it will be mixed. I think that they are people, they are comfortable to be home at a certain stage, at a certain age, and people, they want to go out because they want to go to the experience. So I think for the Yacha language will be exactly the same. I am feeling uh, that uh, one of the greatest gifts that God, you know, all the different gods, gave to men is culture. And uh, when you, you understand and you are consapevole, we said in Italian, or you are aware that what culture can do to you and the natural culture, it is everything included. Uh, and at that point, you are a much better person. You start listening and not talking, and, uh, and you start understanding the diversity where we are living. You start appreciating the, the, the other minority and the other subject, and you become a much better person. And I think that this COVID maybe has done something to all of us. And it, had, it has given us the opportunity to meditate, to think, 
and to have more culture and I am promoting them in a different way as you will see. The future of language, the, food, the future of culture, the future of uh, learning, it will remain, I think, very much mixed. I tend to think that it's actually going to expand opportunities because I think that while many people will want to go back into the classroom, and I don't teach regularly as dean, but occasionally I do, and I know that the ability to be in the classroom, to see each other, to see students, how they react physically or their expressions, et cetera, is, is always helpful when you teach. Right. Yache originally was for elementary schools, right? Up till the sixth grade, I think. Yeah. And, and then over the years, that's changed. You can speak a little bit to that, maybe. Yes, Yache follow the evolution of the Italian law because the school attendance was compulsory up to sixth grade back in the 70s, 80s and even 90s when the, uh, when um, the ACI started and uh, was funded. But then the school attendance age was uh, compulsory uh, up to the 11th grade and then the 12th grade. But as you know, Anthony, of course, we focus on the little ones. We really want the pre-K students to start learning Italian because that's a critical period. It's the best time frame for acquiring a new language. And, and with regard to high school, though, and this is something I want to uh, get back to Berardo because I know Berardo, this was a big mission of yours, and that is Yace now can dedicate some of its resources towards the advanced placement program and, and the preparation for students for the advanced placement program. You were extremely vocal and extremely supportive of this. Well, as you well remember, uh, we had a challenge. And uh, the challenge was that the Italian language and culture was taken away from the AP advancement exam. Yeah. And at the time, uh, the ambassador in Washington was Terzi, and uh, he decided to do a deal with the college board, and you and myself and uh, uh, Sham and others who were part of the group of people that uh, went to the college board to very much structure uh, the deal. They asked for a lot of money and uh, it was almost three million dollars. So we came with the three million dollars. Once again, many Italian American company around the United States, they actively participated uh, in uh, giving the money. A board in Washington was created to follow all the steps to leave the AP program alive. And uh, we realized that uh, we had to compete really with other languages. And it was not so easy to bring the student to take the AP. Some of the advanced students, they had many opportunity to take other classes, other exams that they were more important. So one of the strategy that they use as a businessman is that how I can incentivate a student to take the exam. So we came with uh, the idea of paying for their exam. Now I can say very proudly that uh, we are still above the 2,500, even that they felt comfortable having the 2,500 and they didn't do the right push to go to the next step. So now in the New York, New Jersey and Connecticut area, we represent 62% of the national exam. And that is not fair because uh, it is not because we have a lot of Italian American in the tri Yes, we do. But I want just to say that uh, among our 74,000 students, 67% they do not have Italian origin. The Yasha today has 50% of the funds, they are created by the Yacha. And we do all this extra activity, and I want to thank Maria Teresa Cometto. She was fundamental by putting the liaison between our program and the Italian 
industries and company present in the United States. And we are talking about Ferrari, Lamborghini, Italy, and, uh, and many, many others. That program, it was the base of my initial plan. We have to bring the kids out of the school because by doing so, they will go back to the school and they will tell their other kids, where have you been? Up to last year, 6,000 students out of the classes, putting them together with the real Italian culture. And that has been the real success. And I think Ilaria can talk in details about all these programs. You know. Yeah, in fact, because in, in addition to the Lamborghini, Ferrari, Italy, etc., there there's also been a program for the opera, for example, and I know there have been other cultural programs. So, Ilaria, if you want to just mention a little bit. Yes, Anthony, we organize many extracurricular activities for our students um, and uh, field trips. We strongly believe in the CBI approach, the content-based instruction. That means that the students are more motivated and encouraged to learn a language if they are outside of a learning environment and they have to use the language in a real context. So that's why we take them to many different events. They're all associated with the Italian culture, of course. And so we take them to cooking classes, for example. And um, we had successful cooking classes with Lydia Bastianich in person, but also we could move that cooking class and cooking experience for our students online. We launched among our schools uh, a contest for little students who presented online, virtually, to Lydia their own recipes of the quarantine. And the winner, the school that won the contest, invited Lydia to actually taste in person hopefully soon, when it will be possible, the recipes that they made during the quarantine. Another um, uh, initiative that was very successful was to take the students to the Ferrari showroom. And they had to design their ideal car with a very advanced software uh, so that they could use the Italian language and at the same time create the ideal car. So the students after a field trip or after this online or virtual tour, they go home or they go back to school and they say, oh, Italian is cool. So they become really the best ambassadors of our language. Uh, for example, we take to the Metropolitan Opera House and they see a performance and then they get the chance to interact with the orchestra director and ask him questions. And the other thing, unfortunately, that COVID impacted was the summer trip, right? There's a summer yeah. program in yeah, Umbria. Don't forget that we also bring many teachers and many students to Italy for a trip of two weeks during the year. So from the Tri-State area, only last year, I think we have more than 250 kids that they went to Italy. Yeah. At the time we had 50,000 students. Don't forget, that 50,000 students, they have 100,000 parents. And right. they do have 200,000 grandparents. Right. And they don't talk about the divorce one, that they have double and everything. But they said, you know, with 50,000, we touch 500,000 people that they are buying Italian products. They are close to the Italian culture. And they show them, it was already this uh, six years ago, with the diagram and with the Italian export that the tri-state area and the United States was growing at the same speed that the Italian culture and language was growing and the rest of the world was not doing that at all. We have to bring our culture alive and we have a duty from our parents that we have to give this gift 
of the Italian culture, and all culture in general, to the next generation. I feel much better because I still remember then 25 years ago when I was in a plane and the people sitting next to me, they asked me, where are you? Italian? They used to smile. They were very happy to have an Italian next to them. But the first thing that was, was always pizza or mafia. And I think today, I have not heard, at least for the past three or four years, somebody associating me with pizza and mafia, but they associate me more with the Bocelli or with opera or with culture or with the great things we are doing. So I think as an Italian American community, we should work more in that aspect because we are doing a great job. I think we can say that the last maybe five to six years, seven years, have been, there's been a real difference. I think part of it is this, that that crisis with the AP, I think, brought us, made us more aware of things and that we had to do things differently, work in a different way. I'm delighted to hear this correlation, Berardo, between uh, the expanse of Yace and, and its sort of tentacles reaching out to a half a million people and the idea that it, 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 it had in some way, shape or form uh, 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 an influence and impact also on, let's say, quote unquote, marketing or consumption, things of that sort. I became really familiar with the notion of the Ente Gestore when I came to New York um, 16 years ago and became part of, uh, or 14 years ago and became part of um, the Ache community. Um, it, I had vaguely heard, you know, I, I was in Florida and I was in Indiana for the previous 20 years and ba vaguely heard of the Ente Gestore, didn't know what it was because it wasn't where I was. Um, but it is, um, I, it is one of the great best secrets and we need to get that secret out more. And I'm hoping that, you know, this opportunity for us to chat today is one of the many ways we can do that. So I want to thank the both of you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you very much, Anthony. Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata.